Hi, I'm James Ward, a developer advocate at Google. I wanted to show you some of the state-of-the-art modern developer tooling things around uh, around the Java ecosystem. So I have a project here up on GitHub, and I'm going to start by just cloning this project down. So let's do git clone and bring this down to my local machine. Okay, so we've got the Spring Boot Bars project here. And I'm going to go into IntelliJ, and I'm going to say open, and then let's go to find that thing here, the Spring Boot Bars, and just open this project up here in IntelliJ. So one of the nice things is that IntelliJ supports importing Gradle, Maven, SBT, other uh, build tool projects right in and so then it will download all the dependencies index the dependencies and be able to Totally handle and understand this project all within IntelliJ and anything special. So that's just standard IntelliJ uh, behavior and so uh, It'll take a minute for it to pull down the dependencies and, and get this project all imported uh, And uh, then we'll be able to start working with it Okay, so there we go. We've got the project here in IntelliJ. And so now let's uh, run through a couple things for this project. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Gradle. That's the build tool for this project. And I'm gonna run this Gradle W, that's the Gradle wrapper. And the nice thing about that is all I have to have on my system is Java, in this case, uh, Java 8. And gra the Gradle wrapper will download the Gradle build tool and then, uh, then Gradle will download the dependencies that are needed. So I don't have to install anything else special on my machine other than a uh, Java a development kit. Okay, so now I'm doing this Gradle uh, W minus T classes, and it now is whenever the source files change, it's going to recompile those source files, and we'll see that happen here. So we can go check out some of the source code. I used Kotlin for this project. Same thing works with Java or um, other languages as well. So I've got, uh, in this project, I'm using Spring Boot. And so if I come in and just make a little change here and save it, you'll see that automatically in the background, this is now recompiling that change and will recompile the, the class files uh, for this this project. So, um, so that'll work just fine. And anytime we make a change, it's just gonna do that for us. So that auto recompile is, is definitely nice as I'm working on a project. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is actually start up this, this application. This is, as I said, a Spring Boot project and so with Kotlin. And so I have a web server that I have a web server that's gonna uh, run, but also this particular application uses Postgres as a service. Uh, so backing service to store, in this case, bars. So I'm gonna start up Spring Boot. And when we start up Spring Boot, what we're gonna see is that it's going to uh, come in and make sure everything that's needed is compiled and then it will start up Spring Boot. And I've set things up so that when Spring Boot starts up, it actually will go and start Postgres through what's called test containers. And so I don't have to download or install Postgres. Uh, that is all just going to work automatically for me. So we'll see that now, sure enough, here is uh, everything running through. It is now starting up the Postgres container. And if we come and open a new tab here and say like Docker PS, then we'll see that sure enough, I've got a container running now with Postgres. So, so now my web application, uh, is all up and running. My, my Postgres server is all up and running and now I can go check it out, localhost 8080. Spring Boot also has great support for auto uh, live reload and so I'm gonna turn that on. But now we can come in and add a bar into our database. So now that, that bar is stored in my Postgres database. Okay, so uh, my application is up and running and that's all great, but now let's go see the auto reload experience again with my application actually running. Again, I'm just gonna make a, a trivial change here and I add a println. So as soon as I save that change, then you'll remember that the, the Gradle minus T classes is going to recompile that, but then Spring Boot is also going to reload the, the server. And so now we'll see that uh, my browser, because I'm using live 
dev reload automatically reloaded. You'll see my bar that I added before is gone because I got a new database. There are some ways that you can manage the life cycle of the databases with test containers a bit differently, but uh, for just the, the simple case that I was working on here, any reload is going to restart the Postgres container. Uh, so you could have it instead reuse the, an existing Postgres container so that you wouldn't have that reload. Um, but you'll see it restarted in like two seconds. So not, not too bad for a full reload of the full application and the Postgres database. And of course it works just like it did before. Okay, so, so that's all great, having the auto reload, having uh, the, so now let's go take a look at our tests. So for this application, all I have is some integration tests here. And my integration tests are gonna use my test container to actually run these against a, a Postgres database, the same uh, Postgres database that gets used for when I actually run the web application. Uh, but what's nice about that is I can actually have test containers manage the life cycle of starting up that, that Postgres test container and shutting it down. And the default life cycle is to use the same Postgres container for all the tests in a given class. But I could change that if I wanted. So my first integration test, what I'm doing is I'm creating a bar. I'm using this bar repository, which is based on a reactive, non-blocking Postgres driver. And so then I'm using Kotlin coroutines because save is an asynchronous call. And so then I need to await first before I go on to the next step. And so coroutines just make that super easy to do that async stuff, async stuff. Okay. And then uh, once, then once, uh, once I have, have created the bar, got the bar back out, then I assert that the created bar equals the found bar. So that's all good. Then in my second test, I'm still talking to the same database instance. And so I'm going to validate that the number of bars in the database is one. So the way that I run these tests with Gradle is I run Gradle W, the Gradle wrapper, and then I run minus T, which is that continuous reload. And I'm going to say test. So I'm going to continuously run all the tests. I could do a subset of the tests as well with a flag there. But now we can come in and uh, see that, all right, the, all the tests passed because I actually ran this already. And so let's go make a change here. Let's go break our test. Let's change this to two. And then we'll see what, what this looks like. So when I run these tests, continually, it's going to start up that Postgres database, then it's going to run my tests, which use that database. And uh, I, I was um, one was not equal to two. So uh, must be one and it was two. So let's let's go fix that test. And then you'll see that it automatically will rerun this and then um, we'll be good. So uh, so that's uh, that's just a quick little run through of how I usually work is to do, you know, everything is continuous as possible so that all I have to do is save files and it's going to continuously rerun all the tests, re recompile, restart my browser, reload my browser. All that stuff just happens automatically. And also with test containers and with Gradle wrapper, I didn't have to download anything except for have Java on my machine to do all this. Okay, so that's your quick walkthrough of some of the modern uh, tooling around around uh, in the Java ecosystem. So in this case, Kotlin, but same is true for uh, Java and Scala and other JVM languages as well.